So let's just start with eight. We're going to rush through it real quick. So right now we're on question eight. And, uh, that's pages 16 and 17. And so the question was, but we are so depraved that we are, comp that we are completely incapable of any good and prone to all evil. And uh, we, did, we had Genesis 6, 5. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And that comes from here, right here on the new page. Okay. Um, that comes from uh, what the Lord saw uh, when he beheld the actions of Cain and his lineage, that uh, the whole of man had become evil. Um, and then in Job 14.4, who, who could read that first line there, that one, one liner? Right. And so that speaks to if we ourselves are unclean, how can we, as unclean people, as depraved people, bring out of good out of a depravity? And then, what is a man that he can be pure? Or, who, or he who is born of a woman that he can be righteous? Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, and the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less one who is ab abominable and corrupt a man who drinks injustice like water. And so, God, this is, I, I sometimes say God uh, isn't retired. <laughs> and so, it isn't like he made creation and he's like, I'm going to go down to the Bahamas, you're in control. And a uh, recent movie, Bruce Almighty, explored this with Jim Carrey, where he just gave him rain, so to speak. Uh, that would be what is talking here. God doesn't trust anybody to take over the reins of the universe. And so um, that means nothing underneath him is perfect enough. Nothing underneath him is God that would be in charge of that, including us. And then Isaiah 53, 6, who would like to read that? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yes. And so we see, again, we're getting multiple examples throughout the Old Testament. Genesis, Job, now we're in Isaiah, that we all like sheep have gone astray. Now, we, we think about the parable of the one lost sheep and the 99 left behind. He's saying all hundred are lost. <laughs> and then Ephesians 2.5, who would like to read that? Right. And so we have this idea with the last um, verse here that even though we are very depraved and we are dead in our trespasses, we still have a chance with Christ by his grace that we are saved. And then uh, this, these, so we have one, two, three, four verses that are supporting the fact that we cannot do it ourselves, that we are very depraved, we are incapable of of any good and we the big question was last week um, can any can we do something without knowing that it's good or we think it's evil and then does that good go on and go forth how does that work and we use the example of the charitable donation from an evil person and I just want to highlight that everything surrounding that evil person is more the intent uh, we have a the, that person was unclean or he was prideful and so his intent was not good. However, that doesn't mean that the person who set up the orphanage, the people who cared for the orphans and brought them to the orphanage, the people who handle the money that goes to the orphanage, they're all not of God or God can't bring some good through that as well. What we're talking about specifically is this, the heart of humanity is depraved without God, sans God. Um, okay, and then I added, so this question might have been new at the bottom because I wanted to connect it into the text. Is there an example that you guys can think of that is an injustice 
we keep drinking, to quote um, Job 15, 14 through 16, a corrupt man who drinks injustice like water, what is an injustice we keep drinking in today's world? Is there something we keep returning to that we really ought to shouldn't, but no matter how much we get down the road of history, no matter how much we learn, no matter how much we are burned, we continue to do that. Anybody have any ideas? Rely on ourselves. That's a great one. Our own works, our own efforts, our own plans. Was it, was it last week's Miss Margaret's object lesson of putting up on the board? You know, our own plans, our own efforts. You know, we rely on those and we don't have faith or we don't rely on God. Um, I'm going to add one too here. But also, and this is generic, rely on others that aren't of God. And that is, uh, well, if I elect this politician, all of my problems will be solved. I won't have to do anything. You know, I will put all of my responsibility on someone else's shoulders. Um, this is what I like to call uh, the Adam argument, where all of a sudden, no, 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 it was the woman who did that. You, or no, no, God, you gave me the woman, and it's not my fault that all that responsibility was on you. It wasn't on me. And so um, that would be another uh, example of an injustice or something that we keep returning to that we cannot escape is our own rebellion or our own turning away from God. Any other examples? Yes, because, right, and, yes, um, so let's see here, that would be uh, bending or twisting truth. And understand when you're doing that, when, when you know, the devil's tempting Christ and twisting scripture. And we do that too. What we're doing is we're trying to bend the universe. Not just like our interpretation, but we're also, when we're talking to people, we're trying to change the way reality functions in order so we come out ahead or we come out on top. And that's why, you know, people ask me, well, like, well how do you know that the Bible's true? And I'm like, because there's really hard things in there I wish I could change, but I know that's not right because it's not... It's not true. It's not the fabric of reality. There are things in there that are difficult. But, you know, it'd be great if I could just blot out that sin and not have to worry about that. You know, it'd be great if we didn't, you know, if uh, Christ didn't say, oh, you know what, you, you can love your family, or didn't say, you know, you have to hate your family and love me more. It's more important that you love God than you love your family. You don't put your family up on a pedestal. That's hard for all of us because we love to put, you know, our children's needs before God's or our, or our spouse's needs or somebody else's before God's. Now we have faith that in following Jesus, in doing the will of God, that God will provide for all of those things that we are worried and anxious about. But that doesn't mean we still don't fall prey to it. <laughs> okay. Any other things before I race the board? One thing that sure. Yes. I mean, that just covers everything we do. Right. And it's, and it's unknown. We don't realize it mm -hmm. until the moment is passed. Yes. Or the situation is passed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's where, basically, oh, you know, it's funny. I didn't even I didn't realize I was doing this. But right here, you have the serpent in the garden bending and twisting truth. And then you have Eve relying on herself and her own judgment. And then Adam relying on, well, God, not, relying on Eve's testimony and then blaming God for uh, being misled. Yeah. So it's very basic all the way back to Genesis. And then we can see this um, 
you know, throughout Israel's history, you know, if uh, where someone would become reliant on themselves. Um, oh, I'm blanking on the king right now, but he thought he could go into the Holy of Holies. He didn't need to follow the Levit Levitical rules. And so he thought he could do it under his own steam. And so he was cursed. His kingdom fell. I'm pretty sure he got leprosy. So <laughs> uh, that would be a, an Old Testament example. Uh, but yeah, we, we drink injustice all, all the time. And pride definitely is a factor. And the way it manifests uh, comes out in different ways. But yeah, great point. Anyone else? Oh, there's my eraser. All right, we're going to put question eight to bed and we're going to get on to nine because I don't want to spend all this time on recap, but I want to make sure we got through uh, that, those uh, verses.